Hey everybody, today is Free Ride Friday, so make sure you hang on to the end of the episode to see who won this week's free ride to the $100 MBA training and community. Every single week, we give away a lifetime membership to the $100 MBA. That's over 180 video lessons, interviews with experts, workbooks, a community forum, our private Facebook group, and a whole lot more. It's our way to say thank you for leaving us an iTunes rating and review. We do a weekly random draw with everybody who loves us a review. So if you want to win a lifetime membership, just leave us an iTunes rating and review and you can win a free ride on Friday. All right, guys, let's jump into today's episode. Show the business podcast that gives you a fresh business lesson every single day because we know business doesn't stop and we want to make sure that we give you something that you can use to make your business better every single day. I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. And in today's lesson, you will learn the business of charity in business. There are many new businesses now that are incorporating charity into their business model. Is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? If you don't do this in your business, are you a bad person or a bad business? And how does charity fit into business? Is it something personal or is it something that can augment your brand? We get into all these details. This is a little bit of a touchy topic. And I have my personal opinions about this, but I'm gonna lay down the facts. I'm gonna let you know what other businesses are doing, how it's affecting sales, as well as the choices that you can make in order to incorporate charity in your business or not. Let's get into it, guys. Let's get down to business. Today's episode of The $100 MBA Show is sponsored by Braintree. Looking to set up payments for your business? Braintree gives you your app or website a payment solution that accepts just about every payment method with one simple integration. Plus, Braintree will give you your first $50,000 in transactions completely fee-free. That's incredible. To learn more, visit braintreepayments.com slash MBA. That's braintreepayments.com slash MBA. Tom's is a very popular and successful shoe company. One of the reasons why they've been so popular and successful is that they've integrated charity into their business model. When you buy a pair of shoes from Tom's, they give a pair of shoes to somebody in need. You discover that there are a lot of diseases and infections that can be prevented by just having the proper foot care. There are many people around the world where they are not wearing shoes. And it's not a cultural thing. This is economics. They just simply don't have enough money to afford the proper footwear. Now, Tom's is a very successful shoe company, one of the most successful, and they're valued at nearly a billion dollars. And part of Tom's brand, part of the reason why people buy Tom's is because of that act of charity. In other words, when somebody wears a pair of Tom's, they're saying that not only do I love their shoe and their style, but I also love their cause. I love what they believe in. I'm a supporter of their cause. Now, Tom's is not alone in this. There are many companies that are doing this, incorporating charity into their business model, and it's becoming more and more popular. Another example is Warby Parker, which is a eyewear company. They sell glasses, both prescription and sunglasses. And when you buy a pair of Warby Parker glasses, part of the profits that they made with the purchase of your glasses goes towards getting somebody in need a pair of glasses somewhere around the world. Now, there's a few things we need to establish. These are things that are undeniable. Having a cause, having some sort of charity behind their business helps sales. It makes more sales. People want to believe in something. People want to buy more than just a pair of glasses or a pair of shoes. And that's our human nature. And there's nothing wrong with that. But let's just call a spade a spade. This is a great business model because you're selling more than just your shoes or glasses or whatever you're selling. But there's a dilemma here. Let's say, for example, you choose to take this business model. Let's say you sell personal finance courses online. They're video courses, let's say. And you say with every five courses that are sold, that you'll give away a course to somebody who needs financial advice, who needs financial restructuring in their life, and they just simply can't afford this course. Are you doing this for more sales? Are you doing this because you genuinely want to give charity? Or are you doing this for both? It's all about your intentions. The reason why I want to discuss this topic today is, like I mentioned yesterday, Nicole and I just came back from a conference called Thrive, which was all about how to incorporate charity or how to make sure that you're helping the world while building a business. And there was a little bit of discussion when it came to this topic. Is it something obligatory on every business to give charity? 
Is this something people do so they can get more sales? Is this something that people do so they can feel better about themselves? Is it a PR stunt or is it genuine? Are people trying to really change the world and help people out? And is this the only way to do it? Do you have to incorporate it in your business? I wanna answer all these questions today in today's lesson. Firstly, I wanna establish something. Whether you choose to incorporate charity into your business like Tom's or Warby Parker, or you choose to have a business, take some of the profits of your business and write a check to an organization or to somebody who's in need, or you choose not to do any of this stuff. And you say, you know what, I'm gonna run my business and you know, maybe I'll give charity, maybe I won't in my private life. I'm not really sure, but that's not something I'm gonna focus on. Any of these three options is fine. I'm actually completely okay with whatever you choose. You know that third option where it says like, I'm not really sure if I wanna give charity right now, maybe I'll do it later on, but right now I just wanna focus on growing my business. I'm completely okay with that. In fact, that is fine because you're being honest with the situation. The other thing is that I'm of the belief, and maybe people won't agree with me, that being an entrepreneur is an act of philanthropy. You are putting something of value in the world, helping people, even though you're asking for money in exchange, you are helping people. You're also helping people by growing your business, by employing people, by giving them a salary, by giving them an opportunity to grow, to learn, to become a better person. That's an act of charity. The vast majority of people in the world do not do this. They just take care of themselves. They you know, work at a job and there's nothing wrong with this, of course. You know, we all have to take care of our own. But by simply being an entrepreneur and growing your business, you are helping other people. Now, obviously, giving money through charity, through you know donations, these things are very noble and something that I really, really admire in people that I do myself in different ways and would like to continue to do in the future. But the point here is, is that you have options. You don't have to follow the Tom's model and incorporate charity in your business, and you don't have to write a check every month if you feel like that's what entrepreneurs do. That's how you be charitable. There's other ways you could be charitable. You could be charitable with your time. A lot of people ask me, hey, I want to give charity. You know, How much money should I give away in my business? How about first volunteer in a soup kitchen or be there for your friend that is having emotional problems right now or having a rough time or helping your new neighbor move into their apartment or their house? That's not glamorous. That doesn't make headlines, but it's real charity. The important thing to remember here is your intentions. When you are building a business with a model that has charity incorporated in it, are you doing it so you can increase sales? There's nothing wrong with just being honest. Yes, it makes more sales. People are going to buy not just my products, but my beliefs, what they are buying into. There's nothing wrong with being honest with that. And the fact that you are giving money to somebody who needs it or giving a pair of shoes or a pair of glasses or whatever it is, that's something great. But just be upfront with your intentions for yourself. And the reason why is that if you're not clear, then you're gonna get really affected with any kind of feedback you're gonna get because you will get feedback. Any of these organizations like Tom's or Warby Parker or any of the other organizations that incorporate charity in their business, they do get flack. People say, hey, you're just this is just a gimmick. You don't care about these people. You're just doing this for sales. When you're clear about your intentions, when you're clear about what you want to do and why you're doing it, then all that stuff won't matter. But if you're not, that stuff is going to affect you and you're going to start questioning your business and your business model. So get clear about your intentions, about what you do and why you do it before you decide to do it. Guys, I got more on today's lesson. But before that, I got to give love to today's sponsor, Stride Health. I sat down with founder and CEO of Stride Health, Noah Lang, and asked him a few questions. So Stride sounds awesome. It can save you money. It's free. But what are the benefits of becoming a Stride member opposed to just finding coverage from healthcare.gov or an insurance broker or site? You can go get health insurance from healthcare.gov, absolutely. But you're not going to get health insurance explained to you in the context of your life, and you're not gonna get that all in forecasts and health plan recommendation. That's one part of what we do that's different. But the rest of it is really key for the rest of the year for an independent working American or a small business owner. Once we enroll you in a plan, we stick around. So we have first and foremost, a great support team. These are your advisors. They're based here in San Francisco. They're here to take your calls. If you have to deal with something with an insurance company or a doctor, They'll do the dirty work for you. The other key thing that we do is we have software that you can access at any time. They'll help you pick a doctor. We'll be the first ones to tell you if your doctor leaves your network. We help you pick the right pharmacy to get your prescriptions at. We know how much your drugs cost before you ever get there. So we'll make sure you don't have any unwanted surprises. And we'll even plan your care visits for you. Not a lot of people know that their health plan comes with free care. It seems scary to go use it. We'll navigate you through the right preventive care visits. You can go to the doctor, get that care that you deserve and you've already paid for, 
and not have to worry about footing the bill at the end of the day. Stride Health, giving you the education, the savings, and the easy-to-use experience. Visit stridehealth.com slash MBA to join for free. Whether you choose to incorporate charity into your business, give charity on your own with the profits of your business, or decide all that later, remember, it's your choice. And remember that charity comes in different forms. If you believe in something strongly and you want to incorporate it in your business, go for it. Be clear about your intentions and do what you got to do. Guys, that wraps up today's lesson, but today's episode is not over. I got to give away a free ride, a lifetime membership to the $100 MBA training and community. Let's see who won this week's free ride. And the winner is Tadego Designs. Tadego Design says, appreciator, five stars. Not an entrepreneur yet, but I'm an over 50 female project manager at a Fortune 500 company. I listen to your podcast to hear a positive voice, and I listen while doing brain dead data crunching so that my brain feels valued. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you so much, Tadego Designs. And I love your spirit, and I love the fact that you're utilizing your time in such a great way. And congratulations, you are now a lifetime member to the $100 MBA training and community. All you got to do is email us at contact at 100mba.net so we can hook you up with the free ride. Guys, remember every Friday we do this, just leave us an iTunes rating and review. If you want to learn how to do that, just go to 100mba.net slash show. By leaving us an iTunes rating and review, enter our weekly random draw. It's our way to say thank you for all your support and letting other people know about your experience listening to the $100 MBA show. All right, guys, I want to leave you with this. Charity is a funny thing. Like I mentioned, it comes in different forms. It doesn't have to mean that you have to donate one of your products every time you sell a product. It doesn't mean you have to write a big check every month or every year. It could be the simple things done consistently, whether that's helping somebody get a job, pay their monthly rent, or going down to a shelter and volunteering your time. Sometimes the less glamorous things, I should say oftentimes the less glamorous things, are the ones that have the most impact. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. You have to be a certain kind of entrepreneur that impacts the world in a certain way. You're still an individual, a person in this world that can impact people's lives on an individual level. All right, guys, I hope that helps, and I hope to see you in tomorrow's episode, Q&A Weekends. I'll see you then, guys. Take care.